Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to the Yorkpool Bethnal Green for tonight's World Championship Boxing. Proudly presented by United Kingdom Presents and sponsored here by the Daily Star and Paradise Computers. Very warm welcome to our viewers joining us here on BBC Sport, Eurosport and live here on TalkSport, 1089, 1053 medium way. All the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control here present with us at ringside. Our steward in charge is Mr. Danny Clark. Our inspectors, Dave Wilson, Bob Longhurst and Bob Galloway, and our two doctors here at ringside, Dr. Dubell and Dr. Fletcher. Let's get the action underway then with a light world away contest. Firstly, and introducing to you, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 10 stone and two pounds, taking part in his 20th professional contest, He's from Northampton. Would you please welcome David Cahal. <laughs> and also we are fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the blue trunks and weighed in at exactly 10 stone. He's undefeated as a professional. Two contests, two wins, both coming inside the scheduled distance. He's from Brixton. Would you please welcome Ted Bamme. Time for the bell is Greg Hugh and referee in charge of the action is Marcus McDonald. This is for Raven and Rounds. Well, there's the potential for some fireworks here. No question about that. David Keogh has never been in a boring fight in his life. Uh, Ted Barmy, two fights. Uh, one was a first round knockout, the other was a second round stoppage. So uh, who knows what's going to happen here, Michael? Yes, it looks like one not to blink as, he, as we start off here. David was out early and uh, looks very keyed up. Barmy, Barmy looks very, uh, very well conditioned here. And yes. as you say, it's going to be pretty explosive. I think, think it's Keo. I know you know him well, Michael sparred with him and uh, obviously you know him certainly a lot better than I do. He's always struck me as a fighter that's got a lot of potential but he's got that fiery temper that he doesn't always keep under control. Yes, I, I, I think you're right. I mean he's, his temper is notorious, becoming notorious in the game, you know, and it's not really a good way to go but he has a lot of potential. I spar with him and he's re he is a lot better fighter than his record suggests. He's quite strong and he punches decently. So hopefully he can get himself together and uh, as I say put that potential to use. Just a feeling out session. This one's scheduled for four threes, so uh, nobody can afford to get mm. behind early. Good little left that was from Keo. Keo caught Barmy with a good left hook there. And he's just been caught with a good uppercut. But Barmy seems to have very well. He was definitely shook by that left hook from David. So uh, they've, they've got each other's power already now. Oh, 
minutes. Keo being forced on the defensive here, but uh, Barmy not really getting through with anything too much. No, not they're, being, they're being quite cagey at this stage. I think they, could, they both realise there's a lot of power. And uh, this first round, as you say, is a bit of a feeding out process. It would be hard to separate a win at this stage. Always find it is where good fighters seem to try to pick the work rate up towards the end of the round. Catch the referee's eye. Absolutely. <laughs> That's an old pro Two trick, good, isn't it? Very, very good shots there from David to the body. No, we've seen Keo work to the body a couple mm. of times in this round. And uh, Barmy just trying to get the inside uppercut he's going. He's trying to get the uppercut going. He's all right there. And Dave's leaning on. That was a good uppercut. He got through with that one. As you say, he, keep, he seems to be keep trying that uppercut as Dave's leaning on. This is a very controlled performance here from Keo. I, I, I noticed he came over to you and kind of tapped his head as if to say, yeah, I'm thinking about this. He's, he's all business tonight, which is, which is the way he should be. Yeah, yeah. He, he, as, as we were saying earlier, he, he can produce a lot better form if he keeps his mind together and uh, his temper intact. <laughs> oh, a real howitzer of a right yeah. hand came in from Barmy, but uh, Keo read it all the way. Still very hard to separate these at the moment. I think I'll. There is a oh, good left hook again. The left comes in from Keo. He's landed the better shots and he's yeah. switched his attack from head to body. Yes. I as I was saying just then, I would find it hard to separate. In this last 10 seconds here, he seems to have he's captured the eye, and I, I would give this round to, to David. Jimmy. Oh, Ted Barmy well looking to uh, land that big right hand again, but uh, certainly I think both of us feel that maybe David Keogh just started uh, getting his nose in front there. This fella from Northampton, who, as you say, he's, he's got this record that, when you just look at it statistically, is, is pretty dreadful, but he's, he's a tough campaigner, isn't he? He's got that potential. Yes, yes, he, he has. Here you go, as we've seen the very player, that was a very good left hook from David. You know, seems to catch him into the side of Fletcher's region and goes out, doubles up the left hook, goes to the right. That was, that was very good work. That was very good work from David there. Yeah, fulfilling some of that potential we were talking about. Yes, as you say, hopefully he looks like he's, he looks like he's in good condition, David. And more, more importantly, that he seems to keep his, pretend, his head together. But well, that's only for three minutes, so we've got to see how he is Ted Barmy. Ted Barmy, he's, he, this, is a, this is a very interesting fight we've got amongst you. I say. The guy's had two professional fights that seems to be very competent. Um, he's just 22 years old. He was mm. uh, originally born in Zaire. And yeah. uh, as you say, you know, there's a lot of potential there. Two fights and two quick wins. I mean, that always catches everyone's eyes. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's, he's got in his corner, uh, you've got Jason James Cook. Uh, the former British champion, who's running a very good stable in uh, the South East London area, and uh, I'm sure he's getting some very good tuition, and he looks he looks very very well tuned for you, a fellow two fights. I tell you, Barmy's come out a little bit more purposeful here as well. I think James Cook, the old campaigner, has uh, has had some words with him. Mm. He was a good old pro, wasn't he, James well, Cook? James, yeah, he was a very good pro. And it's lovely lovely to see such a great guy who put so much into the game still staying in the game, and you know. Helping, helping out a host of people. I mean, he's, he's helped me before. Just saw Barmy there mm. switching to the body, which is not what we saw from him in the first round. Well, he, he looks like he's actually on the front foot. Uh, David seems to be giving ground, uh, but he's not actually scoring at this stage too well. He's trying to put that uppercut again there. It's, it's one of those fights, isn't it, Mike? I think it's only a four-rounder, so they can't afford any, uh, can't afford any slips here. But uh, neither man really able to dominate the other with his style. No, absolutely. At this, at this stage, that's right. They're, they're not actually fighting as if they are in a four-round contest. They seem like they're, they're looking for uh, something like an eight-round contest. They, oh, they've just been talking in their foot. Yeah. Good right from body for He very happy as well. He looked like he was, uh, he was not happy about something. Now he's happy. A big smile. Because Barmy launched the bombs again, and they were well short of the target. But I tell you what, if one of those lands, yeah. he has got to know all about it. Uh, there's a lot of power in these shots coming from Barmy, and I, I think he has he has made his impression on David, although they both seem to be 
grinning and smiling at each other. I think a little bit, little bit of needle wiping has slightly filled into this game. I don't know how it's happened. I don't think that does David Keogh any favours. No. I'll tell you what, and David is, he needs to keep his, as we were saying before, when he seems to lose his, his bit of cool, his, you know, his work rate, his, his work quality, shall I say, seems to dip, which seems to have happened here. This has been a better round for the young Londoner as well, hasn't it? Yeah, as he's, Barmy has come back very well. And he's, put together a series of very good and powerful shots. Yes, yeah, a good round for Ted Farmer. Being evasive there, getting out of the way. Uppercut left foot. Uppercut again. Left foot is... Finishing on top as well, and they get yeah. themselves tied up, and uh, Keo just not able to get any effective work done at all in this second round. And uh, if, we, if we gave the first one to Keo, I think mm. most people would look at Farmy as the winner of the second round. Yeah, I would, I would definitely go down to Farmy. So we're, we're at one apiece. And we're going into the third, so we, he's looking good. He's looking good. Ted looked very good there, Barmy. Uh, he seemed to pick the pace up, and he's, to my opinion, seemed to uh, get through with him. Clean the shots of the whole contest, really. Well, let's have a look at uh, some of the work that Ted Barmy did in that round. I mean, it really was his round, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, the, the uppercut on the inside, he left it. So this uppercut seems to be one of his pet punches. He seems to fly it very well from the inside. Here we go again, there he goes. I think it goes for another one. Another one. See that? There you go. That uppercut. He gets it. He gets it at a very short range. He does seem to get it up very well. And there you've got David sort of leaning in, but that will not do him any favours with uh, Barney being able to produce uppercuts on such a tight angle. There we go. Just one apiece going into third round. Interesting stuff. It is Marcus McDonald in third round in the ring. It's action very closely. It's effectively become Marco. It's at least a, a two-round fight. There's David Keogh in the black with the shamrock, and uh, Ted Barmy, the young man from Brixton, just 22 years old, in the purple. And uh, Keogh may have started brightly, but uh, Barmy took control in that second round, and is looking the sharper in the early stages here as well. Yeah, the jab, the jab is being more effective, and the work rate seems to have picked up slightly in the first two rounds. Still cornering and pursuing David Keogh. And Keogh. attempted to He's doing a great job, isn't he, of avoiding that right. <laughs> and a little bit of showmanship here we get from David. Tell you what, I feel like it does land. Yeah, they look very powerful for punches. That farm is the only to throw the right to the body. You can hear that from outside the ring. Switch the point of attack. I'll tell you what, David Keogh is not doing a whole lot here. No, he's, at this time he seems that he's uh, he's really looking at defence. He's, uh, he's obviously been felt the power of uh, Barmy's punches and he's in no need to take any in the target areas. So. There he is looking at that right uppercut again. And, uh, I'm not sure that will get through, you know. There he is again. That seems to, that seems to get through there, didn't it? It did. I thought the early one did and the second yeah. one definitely did and I think Barmy senses yeah. it. There seems to be a little bit of trouble here. David, he's covering up well and coming back well. I'll tell you, but the initiative is definitely with Barney at the yeah, moment. Yeah, no question. Yeah, he's, 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 the, he's the better worker, he's setting the pace, both of them getting a little warning from Mr. McDonald. I hope he's getting the left inside. Barney is stepping, he seems to be cornering all the time. And Keo seems to be in the avoiding, in the avoiding mode. A little grin from Barmy there as if to let his opponent know that he's uh, he feels he's in control. That was a good shot from David to the body. But it's just the odd shot at the moment. Yeah, that, that's yeah. absolutely right, Nick. He's not seen to, he's not putting together any shots whereas he could push Barmy back. Barmy may not be as effective on the back foot, but David doesn't seem to be he's trying to push him back there, but he's completely up at that. Yes, Keo continuing this tactic of pressing and crowding, but uh, not really doing anything too effective there on the ropes at all. And Marcus McDonald having a good look. And, uh, I'm not sure that's where Keo wants to be either. Just close in like that. There he goes. He's, uh, he's oh, trying that uppercut. He's been swung around. That was a lead, really. And there's a sign of frustration coming from Barney. So obviously their temperaments are quite similar here. 
I wouldn't be at all surprised if David Keir, uh, if uh, Ted Barney's cornerman, James Cook, who knows the business so well, hasn't said to Ted, rough up David Keogh a bit, see if you can get that explosive temperament uh, going out of control. Yeah, it, it, could, it could be a possible tactic, but... Uh, hasn't worked, has it? No, no, David stayed stay quite cool. I think uh, he, he seemed a little bit rattled himself there, Barney. I think that was probably from David leaning in. He um, was a little bit upset with that, and he flung him round. Some good early work on here on from the Barney. Replay, yeah, you can see this. As we say, I think his, his uppercut has definitely been the dominant punch of this contest. David done well to keep his, uh, his right glove up. Yes, there was no question there. There was a couple of upper uppercuts. Definitely hurt Keogh, but he, he came back strongly, just pinning his man against the ropes and just roughing yeah, him up a bit. As we can see, yeah, as you say, as you said, not really effective, but still it is work. So uh, he's better than doing nothing at all. So it's the fourth and final round. So there's a final round here now, and uh, Who, who's David, your money on? Uh, I would, I would have to say with with, with uh, David, Bar uh, sorry, Barney, Ted Barney. Barney. Yeah. But with the power these guys have got, anything could happen at this stage. And uh, <laughs> I've only yes. got three minutes, three minutes action. It yes. would look like a points victory for David Barney, at least, uh, Ted Barney, excuse me. Well, they've both thrown their bombs, haven't they? But nobody's quite managed to land yet. If one does. That one does land flush. Anything could happen in this fight. There he is looking for that right hand again, Barmy. It really is telegraphed. And Kiyo's had no problem avoiding it. They're working well on the inside here. David's pushing his weight in him and Barmy is trying to spin him. It was unsuccessful. With these four-round fights, there's so much energy left over after, after the contest is finished that it's uh, being in position, say, a David Keyhole, where I would say he's slightly trailing. Well, he's having a real go he's here, Keyhole. Go. He, must have, he must have heard what I was thinking. I was saying it's, it's a terrible shame to leave anything in the tank when you've got only three minutes left, probably half of that time now. You might as well go out, give it all, and try and get the victory. Yes, time Dave. running out for both these fellows here. Both of them okay. need a big finish. This has been a better round for Keo, and it's going to be yeah. interesting to see how Mr. McDonald yeah, scores is. this one. This is not this is not an easy one to score no, at it all. It is not. <laughs> Almost makes an argument for five round fights, doesn't it? So yeah. at, least you, at least you get a decision. Good uppercut again. Good uppercut. That shook Keo, but he worked through it. He literally worked his way through it. But I tell you, he's pushed his man around in this in, in, in this has, final round. David David's done very well in this. He has he has pulled all the stops out and pushed. And made made a very good attempt of a knockout, even. But he has, he's worked very well in this last round. Oh, down to the final minute. I'd like, like to there. see Barney a bit more active for a young man. This is his first fight in nearly a year. In fact, just over a year. He needs to be busier, doesn't he? Yes, yeah, so I was looking. I was looking at the records there. I, I couldn't work out why he's uh, why he's been out. I don't think it's been injury or whether he's uh, had management problems. But he's a very confident fighter, and hopefully, one of the promoters will get about him. He's got a very good trainer, so, but as you say, he does need to be more active. Yeah, good fighter is a busy fighter. Yes, that's right. And catching his man again, Keo, taking some risks now as he has to. David, yeah, he's plunging in with the head a little bit, I think unpurposely, but it can be quite dangerous. This is a tight one to score. Oh, oh he's got it. That, right that, that right finally landed. That right finally landed. It's been coming. And I tell you, if there's any question about it, I think we just one. answered those questions. See? One punch is it's, um, well. He's been looking for it all fight, hasn't he? He has. He has. It's true. And he, he seemed to catch him on the down up. He's in trouble now. With this and the bell sounds, and surely that big finish has done it for Barmy. Yes. If it was close, that was decisive. And no arguments from David Keogh either. No. Uh, disappointment. But Ted Barmy shows that power. Yes, he definitely had the power. We could see, it. He, as you say, the right was being telegraphed, and he never got him home. When he did actually get that right home, and you can see the effect that it had on David straight away. Let's take another look at that knockdown. And this was this coming, wasn't it? This it was looking like it was coming. I was just saying, oh, that on the downward arc, David tried to dip away from it, and Barney kept going down with it. It's a very powerful shot. Caught him. Here we go. Caught him on the top of the head. So that shows the power. He caught him sort of on the top of the head, and uh, some good stuff coming to the end of the fight here as well. David done well to recover after that knockdown. It was a powerful shot he took. I think he was in a bit of trouble. And he took some know. more trouble here, yeah. just towards the bell. Uh, the right decision, obviously, and yes, uh, as, we, as we say, 
it, it was a fight clincher than, than last com that last confrontation. Well, John McDonald, the, uh, the uh, MC, will tell us exactly how the referee scored this one. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, referee Marcus McDonald has scored the contest for Caho 36 points. For Bami, 39 points. Your winner and still undefeated from Brixton, Tim Bami. Well, that was a wider one than we and thought. Show but, uh, your uh, you can for really a very gay boxing no, day. There was one with David Caho. I, I, would, I would argue a little bit with, with the points, but. So, uh, a backflip. And, and that was a great backflip. Yeah, I'll tell really. you, the guy not only is a boxer, he's a gymnast as well. Definitely one to watch for the future, Ted Barmy. Say so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm learning from her, you see. <laughs>